and welcome to another episode of Focus on Tomorrow. Focus on Tomorrow is a nonprofit organization located in Chicago, Illinois. You could contact us at focusontomorrow.com you, or focusontomorrow.org. You could also email us at focusontomorrow.org. Today, <laughs> my guest is Uriel. How's everybody How you doing? doing? I'm good, man. How are you? Are you ready for the last episode? It's yeah, that's our last episode. Last headline is, but I think it's going to be a good one, right? We're going to talk about a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, so let's get right into it. Let's do it. So the non-profit private pr pride school Atlanta is seen as the first school in the America South focused on LGBT community oh. and the one of the few addressing similarity concert in the nation. Uh -huh. Court records show the surge of transgender student relates civil rights complaining files against the U.S. Department of Education uh, from 7 in 2014 to 84 in 2016. Many complaints involving bathroom and locker room assessing are going unaddressed following court developments. So you think uh, more school needs to adopt LGBT friendly policy? Um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely think. I mean, we live in a world now where that stuff is is accessible now, and it's you know it's legal. You know, having gay rights is legal. Having gay marriage is re it's legal. And yeah. I believe there are policies that there should be some kind of policies within within every community within every school. So I mean, for that community to work in that you know policy and addressing them what's going on. I mean, I think it's great. I mean, obviously, there's a really big issue that's going on inside in, in that community and in that school. So, right. you know, the fact that they're all taking initiative and they are really like focusing on it and telling everyone that there is kind of there is problems out there. There is, you know, LGBT LGBT communities out there that are really that are willing to fight for all, all kinds of rights and uh -huh. basically just show everybody that you know they are someone and they should really focus on those kind of needs and. I really truly believe that a lot of people, especially here in Chicago or like in other big major cities where, you know, a lot of that, a lot of LGBT communities are really strong and there's a lot of people who are open who are open to all this, to their sexuality. You know, yeah. I think a lot of people here should really respect that as well. And, you know, there's a lot of problems going on with it and we should also address those kind of problems and address the kind of, you know, situation that's going on. But in this situation right here, what's going on specifically, you said, um, you said the LGBT community. There, there, how many counts were there in 2000? What was it? 84. Was it? 2000, 2000 what? 2014. 2014. How many to counts? 84. And to, to 2016. So I think, I think a lot of that too, a lot of that really helped with a lot of that really helped within the times of changing, you know, within the years of progressing to the LGBT community, within the years of, you know, getting getting the rights that they needed. I think that's what really changed too, you know. Right. And no one was no one was really scared to speak up, you know. Nobody was scared to speak up, and I think that should go on for everybody around the world. And don't ever ever be afraid to speak up your mind, especially supporting your, you know, the LGBT community, you know, especially because especially if you feel like you have family members or if you have friends who are gay or lesbian, you know, you gotta support them. You have to support them more. You have to support what they feel, what they, you know, what they consider, what what they like basically, what right. they love, what they whether they like whether they love a woman or yeah. the same the same sex it doesn't really yeah. matter. They're just, they're just all people, but you know, them liking another sexuality shouldn't change them or shouldn't be any kind of different, you know? Yeah. But for it being like a transgender, I mean, that's really kind of iffy because a lot of people like top, like a lot of people like to discuss that kind of topic, you know? Yeah. Whether if like, you know, you could cross dress and then, you know, you could just, you know, go inside or you could, you know, a person who had a specific part and they took it out and now they changed their sexuality. So a lot, of, a lot of people like to question that morally, you know, because, you know, they felt like God gave you that, God gave you this kind of, God gave you the sex, you know, as your genes and stuff. So I was like, why would you want to mess with it? But yeah. that's just, that's just another type that people just like to believe in. And, you know, me personally, do I believe in that? No, I mean, if, I mean, if a person feels like they want to change themselves, they're for the better, I mean, so be it. Yeah, so they should, right? Yeah, why not? Okay, so the nonprofit organization, she helped create as a first lady partnership for the Healthier American PHA okay. where she is a honorary chair 
will continue its work convincing food companies to improve nutrition content and labeling mm. of products. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, the, co the group said, uh, when President-elected Donald Trump and the Republic-controlled Congress took over the January 20th, lawmakers are expected to take aim at what one of the uh, one of them has called burn some new rules that's what's called okay. on food and school school launches a new menu labeling standards are likely to be among the changes that may be uh, under fire and do you think the government should tell us how to eat now <laughs> well, I think like I think I think I mean what what she's doing in that situation as you're as you're reading. I think I mean having nutrition label and really like focusing on nutrition. I think it's really important. I mean nutrition is really. I think people should be aware of what they're putting in their body, especially for any kind of kid or any kind of person who's in, in any kind of school. You know, yeah. they need to be aware of what they're gonna put in their body. You know, a lot of this stuff is really is really reckoning. You know, it can really yeah. it can really hurt you okay. down the line, especially if you keep eating, you keep eating. It's really be really bad for your health, you know, in a way, but, you know, should the government tell us how to eat? Maybe not tell us how to eat, but maybe, like, inform. Are they telling us how to eat? I mean, no, I don't think they're telling us Is how to eat. Is that what they mean? I mean, no, I, honestly, I mean, I think I think their, their take of telling us how to eat is just totally wrong. I okay. think they should inform people. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like, tell them, like, tell them, not tell them what to eat, but tell them, like, how to eat, you know? It's a difference, you know? You're saying that they're telling them what to eat. I personally think they should not tell them what to eat. I mean, the government should tell people how to eat. We also have to be careful of, like, you know, all kinds of nasty stuff that's not FDA approved, you know. And a lot of this stuff is FDA approved. A lot of this stuff that's all these bad, you know, dietary that's going inside, all these bad carbs inside, all these processed foods and these frozen foods. A lot of that's really like coming in and it's really going inside and the FDA is like really approving it and people are eating it and it's bad. You that's know, right. a lot of this stuff's really bad for you. You shouldn't really put any of this inside your body. But I think that's one thing that government will tell you, will not tell you. I mean, mm -hmm. but of course they will tell you to eat that product because they want to sell it and they have to, they have to have, they have to market it somehow and they want people to eat that, right? So if you make some kind of like nasty frozen chicken nuggets that are made from nasty process, you know, created GMOs, you know what I mean, any of that inside it, you know, they're not going to tell us that it's made out of that, but they're going to tell us that, you know, we should eat it, and it's all natural, and it tastes delicious, and yeah. it comes in so many flavors, and it's so easy, it's so cheap, yeah. you know, and that's just bad, that's just really bad, that's really, really yeah. bad, and <laughs> people should really inform themselves, people should really get informed of what's put in their bodies and what's good for them, you know. Yeah. A lot of the times, you know, you don't need that, all that kind of bad stuff, you know, but... You don't want to put water in your car. Water in your car? Instead of, what do you uh, mean? Instead of gas, you don't want to put water, you know what I'm trying to say. Well, yeah, I guess you could say that's a good example, I guess, you know <laughs> what I mean? But yeah, exactly, you want to put... But at the same time, you want to put good stuff in your car, right? You have a car, yeah. right? You don't want to put bad stuff into it. You don't want to just not take care of it. And so you're going to just keep, put, keep putting junk in it, keep putting junk in it, and eventually it's going to break down. That's how our body is. Our body is a machine, and you have to fill it up good. Mm -hmm. So, like, the fact that she's fighting for labeling and people to label stuff right, I think it's perfectly great. Because what if some people are also, you know, what if some people are really allergic to all this type of stuff? I mean, I guess, I guess yeah, there's a point where they do label it, but it's not really specific, you know I mean? A lot of times it's really scary. A lot of people don't know what they're putting in their body and or, the main thing is definitely, I definitely, definitely recommend that someone should really be informed. I mean, would you, do you eat a lot of junk food, personally? No. Uh, if, I, if I may ask. I would like to play uh, soccer, like, I'm athletic and stuff. Right. So, my coach always tells me not, like, pre like you know, prevent it from that not happening and stuff. Okay. And I, like, try my best not eating. And I see the result. When I eat, like, a bag of, like, Cheetos or, like, some chips... Or like pizza and some coke or something, like anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I play my game, and you know, it uh, affects me. It, like, this, it's not the same result as it's supposed to be. So yeah. So like on your average day for so on your average day for a soccer game because you're part of a soccer team, right? Yeah. What do you eat on an average day? Like on a say like on a Tuesday, you got a game. So um, you know, you have a game. To, you have a game at seven p.m. What's your what's your so diet like or what's your meal routine? Seven like p.m. First of all, you're. Uh, your sleep, what's it called? Spe sleep. You're supposed to be sleeping right. 
you can't be waking up at like your game is at seven. You can't be waking up at six, and just go into your game. That's like you know you gotta get up, exercise, and then the second important thing is water. Water is like way more important than anything else. And then like you know, uh, I would just say like protein bars, like something like that. Don't eat no like pizza or something like that. You know that's that's totally off the topic. Right. But yeah. So like nothing really greasy, nothing really nothing, that, greasy, nothing yeah. heavy. That's kind of basically like, you know, yeah, ruin you basically, right? Yeah. See, so that's so that's like another example, of just like yeah, you know, like a being informed, yeah, exactly, a being food. informed and knowing that putting good stuff in your body is yeah. important and it's gonna help you out throughout your whole day, right? You know, and it ain't Probably, gonna stop. I guess you happier, you know. <laughs> you can't, you can't, be, you can't be like. Can be all sad. Exactly. If it's gonna make you happy, exactly it makes you feel good. It yeah. makes you. It makes you. I don't know, it just makes you sleep better. Get Probably, better skin. Yeah. That's get like, to that's breathe better. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Yeah. That's so true. I mean, so definitely, definitely knowing what you're putting in your body, definitely labeling, yeah, that's definitely right. being in charge of labeling and knowing how to label things is really, really super duper important, and I recommend that. So what's the third one? All right. The so third headline: uh, Police say a woman stole baby Jesus from a na native. Literally seen in uh, Bethlehem, in Pennsylvania, uh, Pennsylvania, okay. yeah, and dropped the figure off the hospital and note explaining that the baby has been dropped, the baby has been ne neglected by its parents. And Joseph and Mary Chris, police said, forty-nine year old Jacqueline Ross told them it was a joke, but they aren't uh, laughing, and she was uh, identified as surveillance video. And, and is jailed, is jailed on charges on theft and institution violence. And police say she was, uh, she was, uh, she was in the hospital early December fourth, just uh, a minute after stealing two thousand seven hundred figures from a, a payroll plaza. And do you think this woman uh, went too far uh, with this joke, or people are overreacting? I don't know. What do you think? First things first. Before, <laughs> before I even get into this, like, what do you think? This lady, obviously, what you're saying, obviously, this lady, this lady stole baby Jesus and said that it has, it has been neglected and it has to be back with his family, right? In the hospital. And this is just a statue that she stole. I don't know. Now, 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 now. <laughs> now, you got to understand, this is a 49-year-old lady, right? Yeah. Doing this. Now, I don't understand... I don't know any. I don't know any forty-nine-year-old lady that steals baby Jesus yeah. and takes it from baby Jesus from the market yeah. <laughs> and takes it to a hospital saying that's been neglected with a note. Um, do I think this is a joke in her head? Yes, I in her head. Yes, this is a, is it a joke? Did people take it too far? I mean, I mean, it depends how you, it depends how you want to take it. it. Depends how you take too far. It depends yeah. how you take too much you know apparently she's been arrested for what she did right yeah so obviously if she's been arrested that piece must have been really important right it must have been a really important piece yep. and yeah so it's a really expensive piece and she vandalized they get yeah. arrested for vandalization not only that but this happening to her she already had a problem prior to this where she's been arrested before it's over yeah. two thousand over two thousand seven hundred worth of figures so this yeah. she's done this before I don't know why she has a fascination for figures or she has any kind of fascination for, you know, any kind of statues like baby Jesus. But, I mean, maybe she has a mental problem. Not, not like saying she's crazy or not, but, I mean, maybe, like, I don't know, she has a habit of taking a lot of statues, which is very odd for mm -hmm. her age. So maybe maybe you want to, maybe, 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 like, arresting her is not the right decision to do. Yeah. Maybe, like, maybe talking she, to her, trying to see what's going on with her. Yeah, maybe she you might be right. Saying? You know, you can't say she's right. wrong. I mean, obviously it's not funny, but I mean at the same time you can say it's funny because I mean she didn't do anything wrong, I guess, right? Yeah. She's just taking some statues and she's just doing a random crime. It's like another random crime yeah. where it's like it's set as a crime, but you know for some reason it's illegal. For I mean, but anyways, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess you could say she was. I want to say I, I I could say they took it too far. Maybe if they said they're arresting her for all this type of things, yeah. I mean. Maybe they should really get to. Maybe they should really like really get to know her more. You know what I'm saying? Do yeah. like some kind of like one-on-one -on -one counseling with her. That's true. And see like what's going on and what kind of like what kind of fanatic or what kind of what made her want to steal these type of statues, these kind of problems that's going on. So I personally think that they should really do that. 
And I mean, I, I guess it's funny for our perspective. My perspective, I think it's pretty funny. Yeah. Why not, right? I mean, she stole the statue. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know why, but I mean, hey, I mean, to each his own. People have people have their own way of doing some kind of jokes. You know, a lot of people like to prank. A lot of people like to do all these kinds of crazy stuff. So, you know, her doing that, I think it's, I think it's really, um, I think it's really intriguing. <laughs> In my perspective, I think it's really intriguing. You know, I, w I would definitely have like to read something up on that. You know, I mean, but what do you think? Did they overreacted? Do you think? Yeah, they're you know? definitely overreacting because you know there's people dying and stuff, and they're worried about you know something like this. Or right, she might be true, but people are actually overreacting causing the trouble to go higher and higher, let people know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would you have done something like this probably, for you personally? No, not really. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, stealing, stealing, a little stat stealing like a little statue from the thing and stuff, I mean, yeah, that that is pretty, that's pretty weird, but I mean, hey, I mean, ho hopefully she's okay, hopefully she gets out, and hopefully, you know, the punishment's not too bad. And yeah, get baby Jesus back on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the... Yeah. The fourth headline, all law enforcement uh, agencies should track data and uh, Hispanics because no one has any idea how many people insured by criminal justice system in the co country are Latinos. According to, the, uh, according to the studies realized Thursday by Urban Institute, non-person uh, research organization, some 40th state uh, reported uh, race in their in their address okay. court. yeah and they said but the only 50 report at the city the group survived founded some reported hispanics and some were like latinos and latino race rather rather hispanics refer mucho based on the country based Based on our birth and ethnicity, right? Mm -hmm. It's impossible to be Latino and belong to any other race. Do you think that uh, it's important to track the ethnicity of uh, inmates and why? Um, ethnicity of inmates. I mean, is it important? I mean, yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, you don't want to, especially for, especially for, especially for uh, for all the Hispanic people. You know, I'm Hispanic. You know, but. I mean, I always had this. I always had this. I always had this funny little race thing because I would always call. I would, I would call everybody under Latinos, you know. Yeah. And when you use the word when you use the word Latinos, you know, it's really just like you said. It's just basing the ethnicity off just one people, you know. Yeah. And you know, it's like saying oh, someone who's Asian, but it's really not like that, you know. There's there's a lot of different races out there, and I believe we shouldn't be just label as Latino, like no, that person is Puerto Rican, this person is Cuban, this person is Mexican, yeah. you know, this person is Salvadorian, you know, we're different, we're different in our own way and we have our own ethnicity. So for a prison or for a jail cell to look under, to look under ethnicity and see how many people are there, is it good, is it bad? I mean, obviously we know that the mass incarceration are Latinos, right, are mm -hmm. Latinos, what they want to say is, you know, the minorities of African Americans. It's that mass incarceration. Like we know it's that number. So that's the reason why they put us under just Latinos or African American, yeah. you know, because those are this where they're where the ones are like where the us minorities are the ones that are mainly locked up. You know, we're yeah. the ones that are into trouble a lot. We're the ones that are supposedly doing all these bad things and we we have the most incarceration out of the whole world. Yeah. So I definitely believe that they should look into it, I guess, but not under the term of Latinos or ethnicity, maybe yeah. just some type of people and look at look at a broad situation, look at a, look at the bigger situation, look at the bigger concept of knowing that, you know, why is there a mass why is the majority of the people who are incarcerated, you know, Hispanic? Yeah. Why are they Mexican? Why 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 are they why are they, why are they, why, are they, why are they Mexican? You know, I guess you could say why are they black? That's mm -hmm. dumb in a way. I guess you could say that's a dumb way to look at it. You know, but that's just the way they do it. I guess. And you know, I look at my tests all the time when I do quizzes. You know, when they tell me, "Oh, you Latino Hispanic," and I just look at all different ways to like emphasize. You know, when it's like African American, Latino Hispanic, you have those two people. You have those bubbles to fill in. But when you look at the rest of the stuff. You know, you have, you know, you have, what, you have Caucasian, you have all these type of other races that go into it, and it expands, and it's kind of weird, I don't know. Yeah. And honestly, getting into this type of stuff, it's like, it's really, it's kind of bad because you don't know your self-identity. It takes away self-identity. Yeah. Taking away, like, just putting on the Latinos and yeah. putting on the ethnic group and just, especially for incarceration, like, as soon as we get incarcerated, you just, 
you just lose your identity. You just label them one skin color. Yeah. You know, which is horrible. And a lot of the times, <laughs> why do they even got to do it? You know, they probably, I mean, a lot of the times some people may look African American, but they're actually Latino. Some people might look Latino, but they're actually African American. So it's like, is that is that why they want to do it? Is that why they're trying to do trying to discover all these ethnicities and how to just discover who's Latino, who's not? I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy. But what's the next highlight? What's the last one? All right, let's move on. Uh, a secret Santa has paid off nearly five thousand in shoppers. Okay. Law obeys at Southwest Ohio Walmart stores. Store manager Darren Dule tells the Hamilton Midtown Jour Journal News the anonymous sense of pay of layway lay lay items at the Walmart store in Middletown last week. He he did say the same thing. He did th he did the same thing last year as well. Okay. And people are people are they're just when when they when they come into their uh, like final payoff, Dula said mm -hmm. that it was overwhelming to them. And they were very really grateful about it. Okay. And Dule said, "La, lay always, always, always been uh, paid at the Walmart store in the regions. Right. Why do you think? Why do you think people like to do these type of things and then do good deeds like this and not reward their identity while they do this?" I mean, well, first off, I mean that he's he's a great man by he's a great man by doing that kind of stuff and making donations and taking away people's layaway. Yeah. I mean, maybe he has maybe he had this this weird idea. Santa had a weird idea of you know taking care of people's layaway because you know layaway you do a payment, right, and uh -huh. then you pay it off through months. You know, you put a layaway, you save it up. So, I guess people have problems doing with layaways. You know, that's one big dilemma that's goes on within Walmart's and Burlington's and all that type of stuff. People like to put stuff in layaway, but I mean, that's a great deed. Mm -hmm. it's, it's weird. It's kind of. I think it's kind of weird because, like, you know, in a small town, Ohio, and where what, what state was it again? It was Ohio. In Ohio, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of crazy. Like taking care of something in Ohio for <laughs> their layaways. Hey, that's awesome. You know, that's like that's the second year doing it. I mean, people love it, right? They get this pay. They get to take care of the stuff they put on layaway. I just hope don't, people don't take advantage of it. You yeah. know, but I think I think doing something like that is. I think it's. It's good. It's detailed. I think that's really detailed. You know, yeah. I guess a lot. Of, I guess that's really important. And so, hide your identity to do something good is good because I mean, you, I guess you don't want people to gloat, gloat about you so much. You know, and what kind of identity is he gotta hide? He's Santa Claus. You yeah. know, Santa Claus is Santa Claus, man. He's not hiding no identity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whoever you are in the Santa Claus, you are that person. You know what I mean? We're all. Little, so it's like he was. I guess. I guess in the spirit, he was never hiding his identity. You know, but. I guess I could understand the concept of people saying, why do you like to hide their identity? It's like yeah. Spider-Man or Batman, right? You don't want nobody to know their identity or you don't want nobody to find out who they are because they're just good people. They want to do good stuff and they don't, I guess they don't want people gloating about it too much about them. So doing that good deed is good and hiding your identity is always pretty fun, right? It's kind of like a secret Santa <laughs> in a way. You know? I would definitely do something like that. Make some kind of donation. I mean, hopefully, I don't know what Santa does. Or I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you get that kind of money to make the, to finish off the, the layaways. But you know, to do layaway covers, to cover layaways is pretty. It's pretty funny, yeah. and it's pretty. <laughs> it's pretty interesting in a way. I mean, I will definitely do. I will definitely donate my best to whatever I can. But at the same time, I mean, is he gonna keep doing this? Probably. Maybe, right? He did it last year. <laughs> did it last year, but he could switch it up, though, right? Does he have to do the layaway? He can't do just do, like, something else? Like, probably. I don't know, gift cards. A lot of people are doing gift cards nowadays. Yeah. So if you do, like, some kind of gift cards, that could be pretty cool. <laughs> you know? And in the same way, but the Dooley guy, as we talk about the Dooley, the Dooley manager, I think he has a lot to do with it as well. Maybe yeah. he might be the Santa. <laughs> He's probably hiding his identity. <laughs> I'm just saying, personally, I think he might just be it, you know? But, I mean, who knows? Personally, I mean, I think God and everyone should be in the Christian spirit, and everyone should do do some kind of good deed, definitely. Yeah. Whether it's doing some kind of layaways, whether it's doing anything. A good deed is always a good deed, and it puts a lot of smiles in people's hearts. All right. Focus on Tomorrow is a nonprofit organization located in Chicago, Illinois. You could also contact us at web www.focusontomorrow.org You could also email us at focusontomorrow.org I would like to thank my guest, you real? Yeah, man, that was fun. Hopefully we'll be back next time. That's right. the last episode, right? Yeah, it's the last episode. We'll see you guys next season, probably. <laughs> probably, right. Um, Alright, guys, see you guys next time.